I've been playing the same game of Civilization 2 for almost 10 years. This is the result. I've been playing the same game of Civ 2 for 10 years, though long outdated. I grew fascinated with this particular game because by the time Civ 3 was released, I was already well into the distant future. I then thought that it might be interesting to see just how far into the future I could get and see what the ramifications would be. Naturally, I play other games and have a life, but I often return to this game when I'm not doing anything, then carry on. The results are as follows. The world is a hellish nightmare of suffering and devastation. There are three remaining supernations in the year 3991 AD, each competing for the scant resources left in the planet. After dozens of nuclear wars have rendered vast swaths of the world uninhabitable wastelands. The ice caps have melted over 20 times, somehow, due primarily to the many nuclear wars. As a result, every inch of land in the world that isn't a mountain is inundated swampland, useless to farming, most of which is irradiated anyway. As a result, big cities are the thing of the distant past. Roughly 90% of the world's population at its peak 2,000 years ago, has died either from nuclear annihilation or famine caused by the global warming that has left absolutely zero arable land to farm. Engineers, late game worker units, are always busy continuously building roads so that the new armies can reach the front lines. Roads that are destroyed by the very next turn when the enemy goes, so there isn't any time to clear swamps or clean up the nuclear fallout. Only three super massive nations are left. The Celts, me, the Vikings and the Americans. Between the three of us, we have conquered all the other nations that have ever existed and assimilated them into your respective empires. You've heard of the Hundred Year War? Try the 1700 Year War. The three remaining nations have been locked in an eternal death struggle for almost 2000 years. Peace seems to be impossible. Every time a ceasefire is signed, the Vikings will surprise attack me or the Americans the very next turn, often with nuclear weapons, even when the UN forces a peace treaty. So I can only assume that peace will come only when they're wiped out. It's this that perpetuates the war ad infinitum. Have any of you old Civ 2 players out there ever had this problem in the post late games? Because of strategic defence initiative, intercontinental ballistic missiles are usually only used against armies outside of cities. Instead, Cities are constantly attacked by spies who plant nuclear devices which then detonate, something I greatly miss from later Civ games. Usually the downside to this is that every nation in the world declares war on you, but this is already the case, it's no longer a deterrent to anyone, myself included. The only governments left are two theocracies and myself, a communist state. I wanted to stay a democracy but the Senate would always overrule me when I wanted to declare a war before the Vikings did. This would delay my attack and render my turn and often my plans useless. And of course the Vikings would then break the ceasefire like clockwork the very next turn. Something I also miss in later Civ games is a little internal politic. Anyway, I was forced to do away with democracy roughly a thousand years ago because it was endangering my empire. But of course the people hate me now, and every few years since then, there are massive guerrilla, late game barbarians, uprisings in the heart of my empire that I have to deal with, which saps resources from the war effort. The military stalemate is airtight. The post late game in Civ 2 is perfectly balanced because all remaining nations already have all the technologies, so there's no advantage. And there are so many units at once on the map that you could lose 20 tank units and not have your lines dented because you have a constant stream moving to the front. This also means that cities are not only tiny towns full of starving people, but that you can never improve the city. So you want a granary so you can eat? Sorry, I have to build another tank instead, maybe next time. <laughs> My goal for the next few years is to try and end the war, and thus use the engineers to clear swamps and fallouts so that farming may resume. I want to rebuild the world, but I'm not sure how. If any of you old Civ 2 players have any advice, I'm listening. This front line hasn't moved in almost 1,000 years. Whenever conventional forces start to make progress, they just get nuked. These cities often change hands but are never kept for long by either side. This is all that's left of Japan, Greece and the Sioux nations. 
A few small towns spread across a vast wasteland of swamps, nuclear fallout and old roads. Most cities have disappeared altogether. Well guys, you know the coolest thing about this story? You can actually download a save file. You need to go ahead, save the top link in the description. There's, they've got a subreddit dedicated to this. Now, it's not as active as what it used to be, but it's still really cool. So if any of you guys have got Civilization 2, you guys can go ahead, download this scheme save, and see how you guys get along with it. There's actually... Try and fix this fucking, fix this fucking mess. mess. You know what this reminds me of? It's, it's pretty much 1918. Or no, sorry. Sorry, 1984. This is exactly 1984. Even the way it's set up with the three different powers yeah. fighting each other. It's so good. Good. I love it, and uh, if you guys want to, you guys have got Civilization 2, go ahead, check it out. It takes to fucking... <laughs> I know, definitely. It actually has quite a following, but as I say, it's not as big as what you used to. Dr. Manhattan, yeah. here like we you. But uh, definitely check it out, and uh, there's actually quite a few stories people have gotten, so... Uh, we're going to move ahead. We're going to move into one of the stories. And uh, if you guys really enjoy this, like I I, I particularly enjoy this, uh, we might do a few more story times that people have written up in this setting. I think it's really cool. And if you've got Civilization 2, you need to go ahead and download it yourself like right now. I'll link to all the stuff down below. But uh, let's get into the story time. Stay on path. The skies are dark. And the smell of oil and rot fill the air. Rising up from the stagnant water, permeated throughout countless sunrises. Marinated in the bomb's remains, the invisible death. I walk, a destination I do not know, towards an enemy I have never met. I have known ten and four cycles. My mother, two ten and a four. My father, I do not know. He is ahead somewhere, having left to walk these same steps a year of my birth. Just like I leave my daughter the year of hers. I try to imagine a good future for her, but there isn't one. She wasn't born within the inner city, within the farm or factory families, an existence to birth the sons fortunate enough to learn these skills, or the daughters to take her place. She was born in the outskirts of what was once a city, near the outer walls of what was once thought to be security. She will live a life not unlike mine, learning of stealing and scavenging, of rape and killing. The only chance for her to be taken by the party is one of the many wives of a member, to the winds I pray she grows to be pretty. Better to be sold to one man of the party than sold to the endless filth I have known. There is nothing now. Only the sun and moon and the never-ending hunger. I look around to the men around me. Which one would make the best meal? The weapon I've been given would do it. A bullet to the back of the head. An accident. No. They might take the gun and force me off the path. Stay on the path. I tighten my grip. A relic of forgotten time. Brought back from countless fronts over countless cycles by the never-ending supply of engineers that were cast out to the factories. Building the roads I walk on. Returning and restoring the weapons we fight with. The notches cut into the side. Kills. Battles fought. Men who have wielded it? I would never know. All I knew was how it worked. They showed me that in precision, and only that, after I was conscripted. Or conned, as the elders say. I would not die on my own terms after what I had done. Either back there, a slow and cheap death nailed to the tops of the inner walls, or right here, in the wastes of the world. Either way, my end was of party's design, not mine. The hunger grows worse with the march. I long for one last meal before the fire falls from the skies, and we too become another soul lost to these lands, another voice in the winds carrying the invisible death. I had tasted man before, the sin I was now paying for it. Yet a taste I could not bring myself to hate. Better than the dogs, rats and cats, and not unlike what I imagined the horse to taste of. The great living marching machines ahead, pulling the cannons that will lay waste to the enemy, of the same kind that will likely lay waste to me. The horse was a precious commodity, I was not permitted to kill it. Nobody was. Not until it had been worked to death could it be eaten. Not even the farms or factories that used them to complete the cycles. They had the strength of ten men, and so held by a higher price than most. They eat the food the farms sow, and when they die, they're melted down, mixed with the dogs, cats, rats and insects, and fed to the masses. There are stories of other beasts of the land, before the war. Rumours the party had in their possession large dogs, enough to feed ten families, with tails the shape of spring in my rifle. But I couldn't believe them. They who told of animals moving their arms of cloth and soaring through the skies like our flying killers. Or of beasts as big as the death machines, with long noses and giant ears. 
unimaginable anything but the scavengers could ever have survived this world. Stay in the path. We briefly leave the waterlogged refuse and pass through the dead city. Once a place of learning and wealth for all I've been told. Now a refuge of the anarchists and traitors that appear every few cycles. Having been brought to their end by their lot, they rise and are brought to their end by their party. With armies much like this. The captives of such battles brought back and made to fight packs of dogs in the pits. A cheap feed and easy entertainment for an endlessly violent people. Their leaders pulled limb from limb by the horses for the main event. Here in the decaying ruins, I could only see a peaceful mirror of the place I had called home. Because here now the people sleep in eternity. I wonder if their sleep is as violent and as restless as their lives. Waiting in the torment for the world's never-ending turmoil to stop. They will have been waiting too long. I'm a wait even longer. No one I've ever known has seen anything else. Has known anything else. The party is absolute in its belief in this war. And so must we. On order of the great leader Lycarius. As old as time itself, the fools say, the true believers really do imagine he is still alive. The immortal leader fighting the glorious war against the false idols of the old. Believers who say he built the world. Others who say he lives on within the great machines themselves. Designed an end to the war for the good of his people. The heretics say he wishes not an end, but to continue the war forever for his own wealth. That he cares not for his people. Careless words. I've caught these people suffer a fate worse than the pits. I'd seen it only once. Their hands sewn together around the chain. Pushed up behind their back breaking point. Their chain splits as it's pierced through their shoulders towards the next heathen's head. Binding them together. A metal rod is pierced through their heels, connecting their legs. These two are chained together, connected to the first chain, in turn connected to a horse leading the grip. March forward ceaselessly, they can never stop. Whipped raw and carrying a speaker of the party on their shoulders, shouting praise to the leader from this platform. The crowd are given leftover metal shavings from the factories to throw at the heathens for their sins. Yet in this agony they cannot scream as their tongues have been cut out and their mouths sewn shut, nor look away as their eyes are sewn open and heads secured in place. Any who have fought whilst in captivity have been castrated. They are marched until the crowds tire. Any that have survived are forgotten by the party's mercy. Unbound, I'm finally left to what remains of the gatherings to be beaten and stoned to death. A reward for the most loyal believers and most bloodthirsty of citizens. Stay in the path. The leaders' fanatics have grown in recent times. The lives of our communal lives are being silently left to the past, replaced by the growing uproar of the party, the believers, and the glory of Lycoris. It grows throughout the city faster than both the invisible and Black Death combined, its own people tearing down the few solaces of civilization left to the sound of applause. The party says it needs the materials to further the war effort, the final push needed to overthrow our enemies. The party deceives. Peace is but a myth. Though tales of an ancient peace between all men persist, an alliance in the old world of our now three warring empires, the Americans across the great sea vanquishing the threats towards the sunset, whilst we and the barbarians fought the enemies towards the sunrise, ours both once won within a union within itself, splintered at the coming of the eternal war and left as two empires, Lycoris's lands reaching to the eternal hot sands across the narrow sea, the barbarians across the great graveyards of man and the cold wastes that stretch towards the sunrise. Beyond this lies the fabled sea of ash, as deep as ten men and falling from the skies forever, where the eternal war was first fought and the earth turned to fire itself. The only places left in the world were cities, and the few that had defences able to withstand the great bomb. My mind is brought back to the moment by the wailing of man. He has fallen from the path. I had known him. For in the cycle after mine, the bog marshes, ceaseless and unending, have taken a hold of him now, and no amount of manpower will be given to help. No amount will help. If the ropes don't snap, or more men don't fall in after him, the invisible death will take him within ours, before we have even arrived at our destination, our end. With every flailing movement he sinks further, the wailing turned to crying. I march on. I stay on the path. As I look back, I see an engineer and our group's leaders waiting for him to go under. Then they can safely pick out his weapon that hasn't yet submerged 
like the trouble of him trying to grab on. I had made the choice that got me here, and now the only one remaining to me was my ending. It would not be the same as his. I could only hope for a quick death, could only hope this army is a big enough threat, and that the enemy send their great bomb, the bomb that made the water rise, the invisible death appear, destroyed the cities, and turned the world to ash. I would be glad of the bomb then, for there is nothing left it can destroy but me. Men created the bomb to destroy the world, and with its help, men destroyed the hearts of men, the hope within, and any hope of a future. Living has been an eternal struggle, the eternal war. I will be glad to leave this place. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one, because I really enjoyed it. Um, to me, that gives me serious... It's like a weird mix of 1984 mixed with 40k. Tell me I'm wrong. It kind of does give me that feel. But no, that's a story time light up that um, a guy did for the Eternal War. If you want to know more about the Eternal War or Link's Time Blue, they've got their own sub got it. It's kind of dead now these days. But look, maybe it's enough that maybe you guys would be interested in maybe check it out because I think it's a really cool concept and I really enjoy it. And I'd love to see maybe a bit of a boost back into the community because it seems to have like dried up a wee bit, you know? But look, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Remember, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think, because this is very different to what we normally do. Like, this is completely off what we normally do, if I'll be honest with you. But I thought it was worth covering, so let us know what you think down below. Um, remember to check out the models. Um, Instagram, Facebook, Megan's channel, Garbo, all that. You know, you know how it is. All right. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Oh.